Ladies and gentlemen, Intel are back, at least according to many of the leaks that have been circulating for their Nova Lake range of processors. While I was cautiously optimistic before, um, the more I'm seeing regarding Nova Lake, the more I actually I'm kind of hyped for the next generation of Intel CPUs, because I think it's fair to say that while Arrow Lake wasn't awful, generally speaking, AMD have definitely been coming out on top. Not just because their processors as a core, if you excuse the pun, have been very impressive, but much of the underlying technology, such as the X3D cache, has really given AMD a quite a nice advantage particularly when it comes to, for example, gaming. But this looks like it will be changing with Novalink because there are a lot of rumors that Intel will be, of course, including its own uh, large cache tile, but also there have been some updates uh, that we're going to be going through in just a moment that really does seem to highlight that Intel have made some significant changes under the hood, not just in terms of the core count, but just the overall I.O. of the processors, memory support, and lots of other stuff. So let's start things out with the uh, configuration of the actual CPU cores themselves, and then we'll start to kind of drill down. So this information is courtesy of Chili Donk, and they've had a pretty good track record before. Now, I will say right off the bat that these core configurations here, 16 uh, P cores, for example, 32 E cores, and 4 LP E cores, they are almost certainly subject to change. And I believe that most likely, you can see that there seems to be some gaps. For example, one of the most obvious gaps is if you were to take a little gander at the number of... P cores in the highest end Ultra 5, you have 8 and 16 E cores, and then compare that to 14 P cores and 24 E cores. There's just so much of a gap there that I can't help but wonder whether there's going to be a SKU that fits in between that. I'm not 100% certain, but it's going to be very interesting. Now, some of these SKUs are also going to have the BLLC, and that's basically the cache tile that we've spoken about on the channel a few times before. Basically, it seems to connect to one of the CPU clusters, one of the compute clusters. So, for example, on the 16P 32E cores, you actually have two sets. You can think of them as the CCD chiplets on, for example, the 9950X. And obviously, with that particular SKU, you have uh, eight cores per CCD, whereas in this case, you have eight P cores and, of course, 16 E cores. I'm obviously kind of simplifying the explanation here, but just to get everyone onto the same page. There is also four LPE cores, and these are basically for the operating system tests and so on. So the highest end configuration here of course, would be 52 cores all told, although you could argue that maybe the LPE cores aren't exactly going to help you about running like, I don't know, Doom the Dark Ages, but even so. Um, now, I will be very interested to see how AMD actually competes, because speaking of those CCDs from the 9950X3D, it does seem that AMD are going to be raising those core counts up to 12 cores, uh, per CCD, so of course that would mean 24 cores total. I wouldn't be surprised, perhaps, if AMD retains the single-thread advantage and Intel has the multi-thread advantage, but at this point, it's very difficult to tell, and you'll see more of why I'm saying that in just a moment. Now, um, I'm going to put my glasses on because my eyesight sucks balls. Oh, and uh, just for your FYI, I apologize if there's background noise. I'm doing my best to remove it. <sighs> Unfortunately, guys, it's like... I'm not kidding, it's like 30 odd degrees here in the UK. We don't have air conditioning, damn it. <laughs> Our buildings are designed to keep in the heat. So, um, yeah, I'm essentially dying is pretty much what, <laughs> what I'm trying to say. But um, anyway, Jakin on Twitter also has leaked the uh, I.O. And this is basically the platform PCIe and USB. I won't read out all of this because I'll be here until Christmas. But um, basically, we have 48 total PCIe lanes. So that's 24 which come from the uh, CPU itself. And then obviously, the remaining 24 uh, spring from the PCH. So naturally, you do have some of these which are going to be for PCIe Gen 4. And then you have another 8 which are for Gen 5. And then obviously, you have a smorgasbord of various USB 2 and 3 ports, including a 520G. Now, obviously, this is going to be somewhat down to the motherboard vendors as well. So, for example, some motherboard vendors, if they're building a cheap board, they may decide to not have, like, 500 USB ports at the back of the board, 
but at least in theory there is a ton of IO configuration options here for Nova Lake. Also, Jakin is confirming, or at least providing more confirmation, that Nova Lake is indeed going to be utilizing uh, 8,000 MTS memory. Um, and that's pretty much like guaranteed support, of course. It's going to be very interesting to see what the overclockability of this thing is going to be like. But by far, one of the things I want to sp speak about most is actually the cache configuration. Now, I believe I've mentioned this a few times on the channel before from a few of my sources, but basically, it seems that Nova Lake are going to, is going to have four megabytes of L2 cache per two P cores. So basically speaking, let's just call it core zero and core one. They're going to share four megabytes of this L2 cache. So it's not quite private. Arrow Lake, on the other hand, as a comparison, has three megabytes of L2 cache per core. So for example, if you have those same two cores, that would be six megabytes total versus again, four megabytes total. So you may say to yourself, well, isn't that kind of like a nerf? And why have they done this? Well, I think the answer to that is it's quite difficult to answer if it's a nerf, but regarding why they've done it, there are some benefits, um, but perhaps the primary one is just sa simply saving space on the die. That's one, that's one speculation. But um, it also does have some advantages. So for example, if core A is, sorry, core zero is using, is working on a piece of data, and then it needs to provide that to the other core, it can easily do that. Now, this is not quite the same thing as the rentable cores, the the rentable cores, or, you know, the, the whole Royal Core uh, project. That was canned, to my understanding, anyway, absolutely ages ago. Uh, there was kind of a lot of confusion exactly what Royal Core was, um, or should I say rentable units were. I did mention this on Twitter, like, I think it was like yesterday or the day before. What I want you to, and uh, there's no point really going super in depth into what this is, because to my understanding, again, it is not even part of Nova Lake. But basically speaking, you know how SMT or hyperthreading, whatever you want to call it, essentially can kind of split the resources of uh, a core. So basically you have two threads for a single core. Um, and obviously this started like way back in the day on like the Pentium 4s and stuff like that because the pipelines are so long. You can think of the rentable unit philosophy as kind of that, but in reverse. So rather than it splitting a single core and that can kind of handle multiple threads, instead essentially you kind of, it's almost like, oh, actually a really good example is SLI for a processor core. <laughs> There you go. I was way overthinking that explanation. Yeah, you go. SLI for a processor core. So basically speaking, uh, CPU cores could come together to like processor specific instruction. But again, to my understanding, that is not in Nova Lake. Oh, and one other thing before I close out the video, I am very cognizant that uh, a lot of folks have been messaging me asking my opinions regarding the new next generation Xbox and stuff like that. Tell you guys the truth. Um, I've been kind of waiting for some more official announcements, but I don't know whether they're going to pop out uh, because at the moment there's just very little information regarding the next generation Xbox other than AMD and uh, Xbox themselves have basically said they're coming together on a project. I might do a more extensive video on this tomorrow, just my overall thoughts so far regarding the PS6. Um, I will be hopeful Microsoft are very competitive for the next generation and obviously I want the best because... Well, quite honestly, I don't just want a situation where Sony dominates the console space. And I, I put it in such quotations because, like, what is console gaming when you're looking at Microsoft's plans? It seems that they're not just going to be in the console space anymore. They're really going to be pushing towards, like, a cloud-based future and a bunch of other stuff. Whereas PlayStation, you know, it's not just... Basically, PlayStation are going to have a much more console like strategy it seems and xbox are definitely going to be going to more like a like almost a, a more of a, a service and platform so it's going to be very interesting to see when we get a lot more official information with that said guys hopefully you've enjoyed the video take care of yourselves bye for now